Even though I was fascinated with dragons from a very young age, I started buying models late, cutting my teeth on the McFarlane series of dragons. In fact, I recently revisited what I believe was my very first one. The McFarlane dragons always stood out because of their creativity, colour, sculpting, and my personal interest in Specchio. The unusual ones always offered plenty of opportunity for speculation, and all for a reasonable, even low price, almost the equivalent of Halonku for outstanding dinosaur models today. And sadly, the line ended with Series 8, way back in 2008. Now recently, a couple of new ones have shown up. Now I've been asked a few times what I thought and whether I'd be reviewing any. I've not been too excited to do that, and you'll see why in a bit. When I learned of a possible comeback, I was excited. But the first one, the Eternal, didn't blow my skirt up. In terms of shape, proportions of the limbs, a simplicity of colour, the visage, nothing rubbed me the right way. And even worse, it bore the name Eternal, and the Eternal Dragons have been some of McFarlane's most beautiful dragons. The next looked a bit more promising, so I ordered it. The strange thing is, these two are listed as Series 8, which was where we left off in 2008, and in that Series 8, we already had an Eternal and a Berserker. I would have thought that these would start Series 9. And anyway, here we are. Now gone are the clamshells of old, replaced by a box, which was the case before only for the deluxe dragon of each series. So the dragon is bigger, and the base is bigger. A bigger canvas should allow for more detail and better paint application. So let's have a look. Now I'm generally a positive person. However, the elephant in the room is so huge that if I didn't mention it now, you'd be so distracted even when I talk about what's good. So let's get it out of the way. To sum up, I am a little disappointed. The paint application is egregiously bad, and you'll see more detail later. For now, I'll say that for something this large, the potential canvas is wasted. There are large expenses of a single colour without shades or washes whatsoever, such as the dark green in the legs, the back, the tail, and the lighter green in the body. In areas which are clearly keratinous, like these shoulder spikes, these spines, and also the tail tip here, and these head horns, which I'd expect to be a highlight of any dragon, it's just a single botch of green or orange. The claws on the hands and feet are completely undifferentiated. So the model itself, the overall proportions of the dragon are odd particularly in the limbs and the large hands and feet, but that's subjective, so we'll leave it. Now looking at the head, design-wise, it's rather impressive and very fierce looking, certainly befitting the name Berserker. The highlights are the wicked rows of teeth, which are quite carefully painted and flesh out very clearly. The tongue is very lively and has such dramatic form. There are palatal ridges underneath, if, um, if you can see it. And the top of the head has very nicely sculpted detail in the scales. It's rather spiny, but the blotch of orange obscures a lot of it and makes it hard to see. I can visualise some texturing in this major pair of horns. Uh, perhaps these ones as well. Then the underside of the jaw you see some texture that's rather rough cut. Now here's what puzzles me. Effort was made to create a blend here in the lower jaw. Hmm. 
maybe some differentiation of color around the eyes. Then here in the nose horn, you see a fade. Simple, but still, they are there and they add interest. But that's where it all ends. And you can't help but be puzzled why more of this wasn't continued in the rest of the dragon. Even given a single color application, these horns would have looked better being a realistic beige like in the nose horn. And just looking at it from the front here, see how impressive the roaring mouth is framed by the array of horns, so better color would have really done this credit. Going down the body, you'll see sculpted detail. Um, it is rather simple, certainly not intricate, and certainly not for this larger scale. But still, there is some there. It's also very hard to see the detail here in the dark green. And these tines are the same green. Just some dry brushing as seen in many figures today, like in the safaris and the collectes, would have done so much to bring out the detail. For example, in the arms, you do have very nice detail. Down the forearm. And certainly, these claws look very promising if you want to repaint this. And this general theme repeats as I give you a once over down the legs. The tail. The body. The underside. Now the wings, which again come separate. Happily, they fit way easier than the old ones, which were notoriously difficult to insert. The dark greens are just one blotch. But here in the wing membranes, there's something really pleasing about this blend here. And this happens on both sides. In these blends, you see the potential for what might have been achieved. And I hope you can see through the dark colour just how nicely detailed the wing fingers and the arms are. The kind of fine scale detail I would have hoped to see more of in this dragon. And then the wing membranes themselves have a really nice leathery texture to them. Especially where the blends happen. Now in the base here is where major, major kudos needs to be heaped. I have truly not seen more elaborate detail in a dragon base. You see here the steps leading up and strewn across them the remains of unfortunate adventurous past. Now just look at how much interesting detail there is here. Limb bones, rib cages, skulls, weapons. And around the base 
more remains of unfortunate adventurers, weapons, perhaps victims of this dragon, perhaps the remains from a battle in a now abandoned castle that's occupied by this dragon. Now this is some really, really amazing work here. Now this is the kind of thing you take a half hour just to really scrutinize only to discover something you've missed. And the architecture itself, now look at these steps. All of them are uneven, with individual characteristics, including varying widths, various insults. And here on these walls, the kind of weathering and non-uniformity that indicates a pre-industrial method of construction. And on this pillar, look at these runes carved into it. What would have made it better again would have been some dry brushing, but here the shadows cast by the parts in relief does lend it some variation in colour. Now, this is really remarkable and commendable, and I can't help looking at it. but its excellent design only pales the dragon next to it. And at this size, it's a real pity they didn't do better with the paint. I mean, it's large. It's even larger than the typical creator's model Monster Hunter size. Now, to be clear, this costs $40. A creator's model costs $150 or more. So no one in their right mind would compare the two. But to put things in perspective, let's have a look at a couple of other green dragons. First, we look at the Berserker Dragon from Series 5, in my opinion, the most beautiful series of all. You can see it has a rather simple paint application, yet look at every major area that has one primary colour. Now, whether it's the body here, looking at this fade from dorsal down, And the way these stripes are blended compared to today's. These red tines. And down the legs. Every area has some kind of blend or dry brush. And in the wings, you might think this is just one dark green, but look closely, and I think you can see what I don't have to describe. In the arm, see how much more defined the detail is brought out. And here we have something even more basic, the Safari Limited Flower Dragon. Now a smaller figure like this wouldn't carry too much expectations, we can understand single colours in larger expenses, such as here and here. But even then, have a look at the cheap frill. And these structures on the head, and how beautifully they're painted. And though lacking in subtlety, look at the painted tiny nails. And the claws and the feet. see here the way some tints on the tail could have really done justice to today's dragon. Now, dragon does have some nice detail, but the paint application really brings it down, and the potential offered by a larger canvas is wasted, and I think this model would really look great with a repaint. Now, I really want to support the line, so I'll still look out for future offerings and hope that dragons get back to something like the previous form, but for now, the apple has fallen and rolled quite far from the tree. I'll see you in the next video.